It's a good thing it's coming up to lunchtime and I'm starting to get hungry because I've managed to find myself in the food stand here at the Dome and it is bustling. And I'm here with Alistair Bell. Alistair, you run a company called the Irish Black Butter. That's right, Rachel. Irish Black Butter. Thanks for calling by. It's fantastic to see you. You're going to have to tell me now, what is Irish Black Butter? Irish Black Butter is made with Armagh Bramley apples. That's a Euro PGI status apple. And Ireland's Orchard County's product. It's amazing. Together with cider, brandy, spices, brown sugar and treacle. And it is truly amazing how versatile it is. You know, Rachel, that's an amazing thing. It is both savoury and sweet. Okay. So you can use it as a chutney with cheeses and cold meats. You can have it with ice cream with a company actually in North Antrim and uh, yeah. North Derry who make ice cream with it. Uh, but you can marinate meats, glaze meats, even barbecue. And if you're doing a bit of baking, you can add it in as an ingredient in your baking. It's got a lovely smell. I just, I just took a whiff there just as you were speaking. Oh, I can, I can imagine it actually just on like some meat or something like that. How I started is I'd seen black butters on my travels over the years. I knew we didn't have it commercially produced here in Ireland. And so two years ago, I was actually writing a children's book called Jake and the Tractor. I have a, tra I have a background in model tractors. And so I was doing that, and I got speaking with the consultant at the time. I said, look, I've been thinking about this black butter for years. And he referred me to a genius and a multi-award winning chef, Paul Clark, in Cookstown. And Paul worked with me, and we developed this unique Irish black butter recipe, which we launched in October 2017. Excellent. And you've, you've managed, you mentioned about some of the awards there. If you could tell me about some of the things that you have picked up, I know you've got quite a lot of recognition for this product. You know, it's been truly amazing, Rachel, uh, since we started. I'm humbled and honoured at the accolades we've received. One of the big things for me was last year, whenever we received Chef's Choice in the Blasna Aaron and went down to Dingle, and that was a truly monumental time for me in my life to achieve that award. Excellent. More recently, we've achieved three stars in the Great Taste Awards from the Guild of Well Pipes. done, that's great. Absolutely great. And we, I did have an appearance on a, a sort of business program on a BBC some weeks ago as well. Excellent. And what, what one was that that you were on? I was on a program called Dragon's Den. Oh, wow. And can I ask, has it been aired yet? Did you get the investment? I got the best investment I could possibly get, and that was a fantastic endorsement from Three of the Dragons saying how beautiful the product was. No, they didn't give me any money, but I've had such an echo of people saying, you don't need their investment. You've got a great product. It sells itself. Alistair, I'm going to need to give this a try. Absolutely, Rachel. Let's tuck in here. I'll get some out here on a cracker for you. Now... Some say it's the best thing they've ever had. Some say the most innovative use of Armagh Bramley apples. And Those are big words. <laughs> I am not arguing. I will just go with the flow on that there. But I'm honoured and delighted that the number of people who are enjoying it. And it's great to have it stocked across the country in leading retailers, delis, farm shops, airports, visitor attractions, gift shops. And it's great for hampers as well. So it's been mm. amazing, the uses that we've got for our Irish black butter. And you see these poor guys on the other side of the camera? I don't feel sorry for them at all. They're missing out. They're enjoying Irish black butter. Delicious. From apples in County Armagh to crisps in County Cork, I'm here with Joe Byrne. Joe, thanks. Hi, how are you? I'm great, and I hear that you are not only a farmer, but you've also diversified your business into in today's. Yes, back in 2012, we started making vegetable crisps on our farm. Uh, we grow and cook everything on the farm ourselves. Uh, I suppose it was back to a price war between supermarkets in 2012. On Christmas week, they dropped veg down to five cents between them all and, and we were left with a lot of vegetables back into that following spring so we said what can we do to diversify so we started making vegetable crisps Excellent and if you tell me a little bit about the farm what, what do you grow on it and what kind of scale are you talking? So our, our farm uh, we grow. I have 36 acres myself and we, I rent 13 and a half okay. so we're, we're relatively small we're not big huge growers mm -hmm. uh, so we, we said we needed to add value to our vegetables what we were doing so we were always growing carrots parsnips speedroot oh and they make a great combination because I did have a little sample yes. just before we started yeah um, I suppose really it's just to work with the, the vegetables we were originally using yeah 
Um, I had seen it in the States about 12 years ago. Okay. I have a sister married over in Boston. Um, I suppose really it got me thinking when, when we couldn't sell our veg, we had to do something. Mm. So. And what was the first step in that? How, how did you actually go from having the crops in the field to quite a premium looking product here today? I suppose it, it took a lot, there's a lot of work, uh, we're five years in now. Um, I suppose really was getting the product right. It took us a long time. We, we only got new packaging since June this year. Um, we wanted to get the product right before the packaging, even to make sure that they tasted right and everything, and to get the cooking times and everything right. So we have the product, I think, 100% now. And who, who was uh, doing the taste testing and who was doing the cooking? How did, how did that all happen? So we started off, it was a lot of it was just trial and error at, at kids' birthday parties at home and stuff. And uh, I suppose they were the guinea pigs of the whole thing, really, just tasting them. And eventually we got the product right and we're, we're happy with it now. And when you say we, you're talking about your wife? Yes, my you? wife Sandra, yeah. Uh, she'll be here today, but we did a baby six months ago, so oh, she's at home. Congratulations. Yeah, so, so she's busy at home. Excellent, excellent. So tell me a little bit about the products then. I know you've got a couple of different ones out now. Yes, we started off originally, we do a carrot, parsley, beetroot mix. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we brought out a beetroot only bag as well. After that, there was customers that were coming back. Uh, they, they were eating all the beetroot out of the mixed bag first, and they asked us to know would we do a bag of beetroot only? I did. I did try one of the beetroots, and I've got to say it's, it's yeah, lovely. which is probably yeah. the sweetest one in it. But to spill them out as in the bowl, uh, you probably have a, a nice mixture. If you were going to somebody's house or anything as a party, they, they, they look. To bear it as a mix. Yeah, they, they are. They are eye-catching, and they're just a little bit different from the, the traditional crisp brands, I guess, yes. that we have been well established. Yes, yeah. And we just we use Echel Oil and Sea Salt. They're a small company as well, like ourselves. So we just give them a light shake of our Irish or the Atlantic Sea Salt. And and then after that, I wanted to always do a potato crisp, but there was no point in doing another potato crisp, uh, cheese and onion or salt and vinegar. There's a lot of companies out there now doing that. So with the last three years, we've done a lot of trial and error growing different varieties of potatoes. There are heritage varieties of potatoes. So we have, we have a popular red and a white potato. They're all heritage varieties we use for our crisps. Okay, and what varieties do you use? So they, they all just come in under the heritage varieties. Okay. And we just sea salt them as well again with the Echel Island sea salt. So one complements the other and just to be different from the other companies. So you're saying if you're buying one, you need to pick up a packet of the well, other ones too. <laughs> that's the idea, that's the, that's the idea. <laughs> But one compliments the other with the colours, I think. Can I? Joe, thank you very much. You're I'll have to it. give these a little taste do, later. Do. <laughs> now, Mark, I know you're just one half of Ballylisk here. Tell me a little bit about what goes on at home on the farm. Well, predominantly the farm is where I grew up, but my brother Dean, who's the other half of Ballylisk Dairies, uh, obviously now is the latest generation along with my father to be uh, running the family farm. So that's a mixed farm, predominantly dairy, but also beef and arable. Wow. And uh, tell me then, what's the next stage then, once the cows are milked and you get the milk, what way does the, what way does production work? So production works, that's, that's a good question. We would consider that our cheese uh, enjoys unrivaled freshness because essentially the cows are milked, the milk is chilled and immediately uh, brought to the production facility uh, and production starts. So it is totally, fresh. in fact, you couldn't get it any fresher doesn't have to go too far anyway and uh, I know that you've already won a number of awards if you could tell me a little bit about that yeah. I know you're for a new company that is phenomenal yes we just started into commercial production uh, 12th of April 2018 so our little journey from then if you take the Irish Food Awards the Blast and Heron Awards and Dingle which take place in the first uh, weekend of October every year they're exceptionally uh, well regarded in the sense of fairness recognition um, we were very lucky to come away in our first sort of entry with this cheese with three awards. We got a silver medal uh, for the Triple Crown cheese. We also got best in farmers market category and the best in county Armagh. And we were absolutely thrilled with that when you look at some of the other fantastic products uh, coming out of our sort of general locale. Moving on then this year with the Great Taste Awards, uh, we were very lucky to be awarded two gold stars. Uh, and to put that into perspective, probably 13,000 entries there, and there's only about 1,300 of those entries got two gold stars. So uh, it's a very, very well recognised award. And there have been other sort of smaller awards uh, and bits and pieces, but we're absolutely thrilled with the 
those types of awards. And even in parallel to that, if you take our sort of commencement production April 18, uh, I suppose a very prominent retailer, Fortnum & Mason in London, by April 19, our cheese is already listed there. So you can kind of see how things sort of evolve for us. And so we're absolutely thrilled great success uh, like you say for a very a very young company as well a commercial company and uh, I know that our viewers will probably be already familiar with the brand because not only are you selling locally and selling to Fortnum Mason but you're also are listed in many Irish uh, restaurants as well yes and if we look at certainly some of the specialty food shops in Dublin uh, where the products listed uh, and some of the, the high-end food service companies. Uh, the product is now very well known in the circles of sort of top-end chefs in Ireland. Uh, and just a place on record our thanks for that because they've been exceptionally supportive both in feedback uh, and support uh, and actually promoting uh, which is one of many fantastic products here in the island. Uh, it's, it's really now going uh, or taking place in some absolutely uh, fantastic uh, menus. There's actually an article recently uh, by Catherine Kearney, uh, Kearney, I think it was, uh, in the Irish Times, and she wrote an article uh, titled Ireland's Best Tasting Menu. It's about a restaurant in, in Belfast, Ox. Um, and our, we're very lucky. Our cheese was one of three cheeses, was on the, uh, the cheese course, which was exceptionally complimentary. I didn't know about that until some of my friends told me about it later that day. Uh, but it, it's, it's fantastic how that actually helps you. And you can see from a number of sources are the chefs, the restaurant, the journalist. Um, there really is, I think, uh, great momentum uh, in, in Irish food at the minute. And those awards, and have those kind of opened some of those doors to some of those restaurants, or how did you manage to get all the way down here? Well, the thing about it is, um, we promoted uh, and tried to establish our brand uh, long before we started sort of selling our cheese. We're very proud of our cheese, and I think it's like selling anything. If it's good enough, it essentially sells itself. But we did work hard to um, promote our brand, uh, bring forward awareness in it, uh, and then it's a matter of keeping your feet on the ground, I think, keeping the head down, so to speak. And I would cite um, the Open Golf Championship recently in uh, Royal Port Rush. I'm very fortunate there to, you know, through one of the big food service companies, um, we had a lot of cheese went onto the hospitality menu there. How do you measure that? Well, you can measure it immediately by the, the, the actual sale, the quantity of cheese you sell. But given that there are visitors from all around the world at that, which is one of the world's, you know, sort of premier sporting events, um, you just don't know where that takes you. And as time goes on, I suppose, you know, things just widen out and out. And it's amazing where inquiries start to come in from. Now we have inquiries North America. We're already exporting to Portugal. Um, and we hope to build on that certainly in 2020 and beyond. An excellent Northern Ireland success story. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you.